Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, hello, take hello. that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by a not so windy today, Jill Bryan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the palm trees are not swaying. Yeah. And um, a freshly laundered Pedro Time Change Mateus. Yes. It, it, I can smell the detergent. It's a <laughs> lovely thing. It's the one <laughs> one thing, one time a year we get to look forward to is the time change from North America to Britannia. Yeah, so, there's two weeks delay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but which is nice because things are earlier for two weeks, but there's always yes. that, that day transition now that we do like the Wednesday show. It, mm -hmm. Did it ever happen on our Saturday show? Or was there like enough it, lead in time of being in the show notes and like, I think that's, yeah, I think that's late enough at night that really I don't yeah, remember whatever. it ever happening. But yeah, no, <laughs> this is an hour early. So it's like leave work, do things and it immediately <laughs> get started on uh, LWDW. Yeah, it's it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of things, man, what have you been up to? I heard you had uh, some USB issues. I did. You uh, suffered. You actually, finally get your, uh, I own an AMD motherboard card. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is uh, the issue that has come to light recently and that AMD has now fixed supposedly in the newest version of a G set, which is sometimes an X570 and B550 motherboards, USB 3 would just cut out. Mm. And I'd never had mm -hmm. that happen in the three or four months that I've had this X570 motherboard. Never had it happen. Yesterday, after the stream... Sound went off. I look at the uh, sound interface. It's like, oh, don't tell me. <laughs> because oh. all the LEDs were off. There was nothing was happening. Oh, boy. So I grab the mouse and the cursor doesn't move. Oh, wait a second. The mouse is connected to one of the USB 3 ports. All right. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so reboot, go into the BIOS, check for BIOS updates. There wasn't one, but when uh, the operating system loaded back up, it's like, hey, 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 USB 3 is back on. So, okay. <laughs> well, I guess you Yay. were saved by having your gerbil plugged into the USB 3 port because if it was yeah. USB 2, you're like, oh, no. This, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, the keyboard was plugged into USB 2. That's how I did the uh, Control Alt T reboot. Mm. <laughs> there. <laughs> well, well played. <laughs> Joe, what's new with you? Are you getting ready to move stuff around? Yes, I am. So I'm waiting for a new big uh, desk to come. And it's not just a, a large desk, which is about the size of the one I have, but it's pink <laughs> to go with my pink computer, pink keyboard, pink <laughs> mouse, pink XLR cable. <laughs> And I do oh, have so pink headphones, you, too. Next time you walk into a room wearing all pink, no one can see? Perfect yeah. headphones. <laughs> no, basically, I mean, most of this is for Steve to try to get him to use computer more. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, it was actually a challenge to find a large enough computer um, desk that would hold uh, my three monitors that measure five foot wide because of my 43 inch and my 230s. 1.3 meters, I looked it up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ven had an idea of, uh, uh, like, like he has his big 43-inch, like, uh, he's got the same one I do, and to mo put it on a monitor stand. That That is a good mm -hmm. idea. <laughs> it works as long as you get an industrial, like, key that's what I ended up having to get for it was an industrial kiosk stand, because, I mean, it's a really small, big screen TV at 43 inches. But Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Well, uh, oh, we need a Ms. Piano still in the middle of the living room. No, no, it has been moved into its proper, uh, its temporary location before we, we donate it. Is that, is that a fancy way of saying you just moved it back where it was? No, no. Actually, it's <laughs> in it's a different location. Oh, <laughs> next to yeah, another wall. It's the same room, it's, but next to another wall. <laughs> no, it's behind uh, the couch. It's kind of like uh, we had thought about putting a credenza behind the couch. So this is a temporary credenza for now. Right on. Right on. <laughs> so uh, if you're watching like the pre show before we get started, played around with audio still, um, still hammering on Sonobus, using that to Pedro right now. We did a total show with it Saturday, myself, Jordan, and Pedro. Pedro and Jordan were both coming in over uncompressed PCM16 mm -hmm. audio. So sound quality is going up and it worked relatively well. We're kind of getting things tied. Timing's kind of an issue because we have radically different latencies between myself, Toronto, myself, and um, Cambridge. 
So mm-hmm. getting things in will probably just end up reducing mm-hmm. this down to like Jack Trip instead of the GUI, but Sonobus is great. And I love misusing something designed for musicians to like jam together. I'm like, I can make use of that for podcasting. <laughs> um, interesting piece of kit. I suggest go checking out what they've done is, uh, well, I should say one, what the guy has done is uh, put a nice GUI on this to where there's at least a chance of an average person being able to figure it out. You, you have a fighting chance. Pedro can use it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the be- I, I'm basically the entry level benchmark here. So if I can figure out, yeah. you got it. Like I, like I was saying in the uh, pre show, I'm like, I'm just going to send you a bash script to. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make that a thing. Also, Doom 3, Coop. We're Ooh, playing it. Nice. Uh, we'll be back Thursday, tomorrow night. But first episode is out. That went out early for patrons because. Uh, it took forever for YouTube to chew on it because it's at UHD. So I went ahead and put the 1080p version out before it finished rendering uh, in our Discord and up on Patreon. So if you want to look at that, but we'll be back uh, doing it live tomorrow night. It's not BFG edition, which I need to remember to put in the title. And it's fun. <laughs> you know, we're using the latest version of Doom and <laughs> the latest uh, LibreCoop. And it, it's nice. a a lot less janky experience than uh, we did with uh, Meet the Freemans, Pedro. <laughs> uh, again, not a very high bar. <laughs> I'm not a high bar. Well, we're waiting for something. Except for I was able to just uh, like murder an NPC to death like right at the beginning of the game by punching him because mm-hmm. it broke somehow. <laughs> he, he went down quick and hard. But if you want to tune into that, that'll be mm-hmm. 7.30 tomorrow live. And of course, I'll be like a big fancy person later and i didn't win my lot i've gotten to the point speaking of rendering stuff that are taking forever um with video cards and like i really want a 3060 and uh mm-hmm. i went looking i've been looking for the past couple of days and i finally broke down and entered the new egg lottery last mm-hmm. night when they had one so i did that thing all afternoon mm-hmm. i'm like am i gonna get a chance and a blessed opportunity to give you money for card nay did you get one so I don't know m- maybe next time whatever I, maybe not next time because NVIDIA's like oopsie doodle uh, we, we removed the uh, hash limiter on the uh, 3060 mm-hmm. yeah yeah that was totally not intentional you guys uh, it's not like we left a driver up for two days for people to download and then oh. yeah oops no. uh, we didn't mean for that see well, doesn't that sound better than like our pr marketing push campaign ended so we can finally get back to business yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they had no intention i mean money is money, money is money be it from people who play games or people who are riding those gpus to the ground mining stuff mm-hmm. yeah money is money <laughs> so for all my brothers and sisters out there i too feel i have sympathy for you because you know halfway through march of 2021 all you're welcome to is out of stock everywhere. Yep. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good times. Well, okay. Maybe I shouldn't be worried about video cards because the year of the Linux desktop is here and we have proof. <laughs> yes. If there was is- one program that was holding back desktop adoption for Linux. It yes. Not Photoshop, <laughs> not any no. of the Adobe Creative Suite. No, sir. <laughs> but so after more than two decades, the open source file archive 7-Zip is now officially available on Linux. That's right, folks. 7-Zip. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo-hoo. laughs> it's, it's command line only and an alpha, but the 21.01 alpha build for Linux for Linux is available for both x86 and ARM in 64-bit and 32-bit. Yay! So this is uh, really, really good news because after years of using the unofficial P7-zip for 7Z archives, it is nice to use an official version. And P7-zip hasn't been supported since 2016. So we, we've needed an update <laughs> way to, to um, uncompress and decompress all our formats, um, R, ARG, RAR, LZH, what we call lizard compression. <laughs> it does all the things. <laughs> I saw this. Now, first of all, we need to point out this is going to be command line only. Which, okay, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. 
Mainly it doesn't bother me <laughs> because in the 20 plus years of Linux usage, I didn't know what this was. I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's a Windows program that does the Windows thing. That's neat. Never, <laughs> never needed it. <laughs> it, uh, it is basically the Windows equivalent to installing uh, UNRAR and LZMA and a few mm -hmm. other of the decompression uh, bits of software that Linux offers. It has all of that in the one uh, binary. And yeah, it, it is the one binary. I actually downloaded it to the uh, Pinebook. And it is just the one elf, and I used it to extract itself over itself, and it, it passed the mustard test, the why would you ever do this test, but it passed, it did it <laughs> successfully. Uh, and yeah, it is, uh, you know, for something that hasn't been uh, updated, supported uh, for as long as P7-Zip has, it's been doing splendid because it still worked exactly as intended. But uh, the biggest thing with 7-Zip proper coming to Linux is exe extraction support specifically nice. pulling the cab mm -hmm. files from inside exe packages that's mm -hmm. uh, that's going to make proton um a whole lot more interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> what what's the real use case for this pedro um because I, i'm not saying this as any type of like humble brag i've just never ran into a situation where I'm like man if i had p7 zip my life would be complete I just uh, never hit that. If you already have your uh, Linux install going and you've had it for a while, chances are this isn't going to do much of anything different. Say you're doing a fresh install now, instead of having to install a bunch of different things, you can just set up 7-zip and it will handle all of the formats that you can throw at it. Pretty Here's much. an honest question. <laughs> Does uh, Windows have like built-in zip? Decompression now. Zip. Yeah, yes. It zip. does. And ISOs. Uh, you just rename the extension as a zip and it'll figure it out. <laughs> so I need to make sure to send everyone a tart up. He's at, at it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they need well, seven, seven zip, zip for that. <laughs> yeah. Seven zip does do tarballs. <laughs> yes. But, you know, this is actually really cool um, because you know, normally on Linux, I just do a tar.gz. But I have really fond memories of using uh, the 7-Zip GUI on Windows. Not to mention, um, it actually compressed better than classic zip. And yep. uh, so the 7-Zip, 7-Z format was, was very efficient. Entertains permissions. Efficient. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can I run the GUI in Wine? Uh, probably. Yes. I don't That's know. That's actually worked for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you probably wouldn't want to, but you can. <laughs> and it's nice to have a native one with native updates for Linux. <laughs> if this is what you've been holding out for, fully <laughs> support it. So what's in a name? This our next story is directly uh, from the Fedora Project community blog, and it's all about what we should call. Fedora. Okay, this is kind of interesting, you know, because when I think about Fedora, I think about way back in the day, man. Uh, well, let me go ahead and tell you uh, <laughs> what this is. Fedora Core is now called Fedora Linux because Fedora. Mm -hmm. And reason could have just called it Fedora. <laughs> no, Pedro, you should call it GNU plus Linux Fedora. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's actually one of the things that yeah, it uh, is. Yeah, it is. was surprising uh, that they decided to placate the uh, GNU plus Linux people right off the bat with the <laughs> introductory blog post. It's like n n GNU is great, yes, but uh, it's more about the Linuxy stuff than just the you know core utils. So yeah. <laughs> But we all know at the end of the day, it's really called Fedorf because. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, the <laughs> reasons. Also, Fedora. reasons. My, I have reasons too, Fedora. <laughs> Look at that. Or if you want to add a little to the end, Fedorfnix. <laughs> That's just it. <a> <laughs> so we can make it to Fedorf Linux. <laughs> well, Fedorfnix? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds like uh, someone's had a bit of a night out. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things I do want to say about this is, you know, the justification for this, you know, the, uh, Verdi said, hey, man, I've reached out to Fedora magazine editors to start using Fedora Linux in places where, you know, they mean the operating system as opposed to Fedora uh, George Foreman grills. Uh, but 
you know, this, this, this <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, what, what are we clearing up here? What are we doing? Because uh, Fedora Core is what I called it for the longest time. Because it was Fedora yeah. Core 1, Fedora Core 2, <laughs> Fedora, which way back then was shortened to Fedora. Because yeah. it, if you're engaged with the type of person that you would converse about operating systems with, when you say Fedora, they're not thinking about the, the Fedora edition of the George Foreman group. They're not. They know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> so, you know, it's Fedora Linux. That's okay. I get it. But everyone's still going to call it Fedora. Because that's just how it works. You can, I, I mean, I'm sorry. The Linux magazine will refer to it as Fedora Linux, but that's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of have to, you know. Yeah. But honestly, it's, yeah, the, just call it whatever you want, honestly. Well, I think the people biggest, are just going to call it Fedora. <laughs> right here, man. Should I abbreviate releases FLN? No. Well, then why, why are we doing this then? It's for the RPMs because if you look at the end of the uh, I know, string, I know. I'm of trying to make the point. <laughs> oh, right. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, no, going from FC to F FL. <laughs> but in all fairness, they can do whatever they want. But we are dealing with the type of people who pay attention to whether or not something has a certain name to it. I just care if it works. So, all right. So it's now Fedora Linux as opposed to Fedora. <laughs> Fedora is the community it's, and it, Fedora Linux Fedora. is the distro. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got good news for everyone. A naive mythical beast. A dragon that wasn't terribly expensive, so it should be out there. It's never existed. There, there's been takes at it. Even as recently <laughs> as the Pi Tab, I'm talking about a Linux tablet, a legitimate Linux tablet. You know, the Pi Tab, that I was curious. It had a 720p screen, technically it booted Linux, and well, all right, no hate on it, because it was like super cheap to buy, too. It's a great little tinker toy. But am I wrong, Pedro? I'm like, hey, man, I'd say for at least the past half decade, I've been sitting here going, I want a nice little Linux hacker tab to play with. Yeah, like a proper one. Also, you know, not just what, some what I, yeah, exactly. Afterthought that you can yeah. use too, not just <laughs> mm -hmm. pick up, play with, and you know, end up giving to someone. Well, I don't want to say our long national nightmare is finally over, but the GamePad <laughs> A1 might be it. This might be it. Look at it; it's a nice, blurry, stretched out screenshot. Yeah, I know. I'm so nice. excited! Yeah, Jingo West. This is from that lot we mentioned a while back when they were yep. just talking about the operating system. Well, here it is: the device of legend. And uh, the real kicker is, you genuinely might want one of these. You can do. I I want one. We're talking an 11 inch screen, six gigs of RAM, octo core CPU, and a 2K display. Yes. Four by three 2K display. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's the big one. It even, Very nice. It even comes with a detachable keyboard you can use as a coaster because it's a tablet. Uh, but I'm going to say this, man, because no word on pricing, but, you know, I expect it to be priced somewhere between $1,100 and ah, <laughs> Yeah. Somewhere in that range. True. But I would like to jing pad all the way, kids. I want this uh, 11 inches, too. I'm like, it's not 12, but, you know, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't be the first person to settle for 11 inches. <laughs> Absolutely not. And uh, yeah, no, nice. the four by three aspect ratio looks great. Mm -hmm. And it, I guess, yes, Jengos will come with its own dedicated hardware from the look of things. Uh, but yeah, the price, though, mm -hmm. as much as I like it, I don't, we think, don't, know yeah, what the price I don't is. think it'll be within my yeah. price range. <laughs> We don't know, but it is uh, going to be the first uh, tablet to have 4G and 5G and come with the stylus. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> That'll come in yeah, handy. Yeah, uh, probably not less than 600 bucks. Oh, man. If this thing comes in mm -hmm. under grand, it's going to be within just it, microns under like 9.99.98. Uh, I it's say five ninety nine or four ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> five ninety nine is <laughs> five ninety nine <laughs> seems okay because they don't actually. Uh, oh no, they do. It's uh, a 
Unisoc Tiger ARM CPU mm -hmm. with four Cortex A75s and four Big Cortex yep. A55s. So it's not it's not exactly the high end of the ARM SOCs. The six gigs of RAM and the 128 uh, internal storage bits that might skew the uh, price up a bit, but honestly, it is the screen mm -hmm. that's going to be the big one. The the actual case and the screen that 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 that's going to be the big cost one. So yeah, I'm saying five ninety nine or six ninety nine most likely. <laughs> I've already determined that five hundred dollars is the most I'll ever pay for a tablet. I'm looking at one that I paid five hundred dollars for. I'm looking at you, Google. Mm. Um, I'm not doing no, that. Again. And you can blame Nvidia and the GTX 970 for me refusing to spend more than four hundred on anything IT. Mm. Thanks, Nvidia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I want it to be a thing. I want to have a I I want to have a portable pie with a touch screen, effectively. Yeah, I do. <laughs> and with a stylus, so I, I can use KDE. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Why would you want to use KDE? KDE? <laughs> They're developing a uh, Linux desktop environment meant to be used with touchscreens from the ground up. You know who Oaks told me that lie? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the Jingos people. Oh. They might pull That's it That's what off. they're doing. You never know. <laughs> I'm still going to run KDE on it, just to spite you. I mean, you can. Yeah. It's not going to spite me. In it fact, better. you might uh, learn to like it. Might, it. Yeah, it might actually work nicely. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know, man. We'll have to try it out. So, uh, from flat tops to laptops. Yes, Tuxedo. Mm -hmm. This uh, bit of news actually comes from Nine to Five Linux. But uh, if you follow Tuxedo Computers on Twitter, they put out the announcement earlier. Well. It was late last week. Uh, and the Might yeah, even the say tuxedo, six days ago, Pedro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right there at the top of the article. Uh, tuxedo Book XB15 and XB17 in 15.6 and 17.1 inches uh, diagonally, as you'd expect, have been released. And they come with, uh, well, they come with the RTX 3000 series. Yay. You can uh, spec them out however you like. They come with the Max-Q designs for, I think it's up to the uh, the lower end-ish uh, 30 series cards and the basically the slightly gimped desktop versions of the actual desktop GPUs for the higher end ones. So yeah, you're looking at a very, very uh, a good performance. Is that an HDMI port in the front, or is that the back? Of it? The back. Oh, back. that's the back. Yeah. That's the hinge. That's where the uh, the screen hinges. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, no, for a laptop with a thirty eighty or thirty seventy. It's not terrible. Uh, the base model uh, for the uh, X fifteen starts at uh, sixteen hundred euros, and the um, XP17 starts at uh, 860 euros, 1860 euros. Uh, so that's that's a bit of a price, but then again, that's what you pay to be out of stock. I get a good wish Tuxedo <laughs> sells a bunch of them. <laughs> so yeah. well, well played, Tuxedo. This is how you get out of having your um photo shoot screen mm -hmm. on your monitor <laughs> yeah just there don't you go put it there. that that said that said there's something in this image kind... i'm sure there was something and they removed it well this is the only one this is the only one because i'm looking at the other ones and while they did shoop over it they've just shooped it over with just a black mm -hmm. guy you know so yeah all right i see that <laughs> well what's really cool and unique about these laptops is that they both come with a choice of uh, two different screen options. The XP15 comes with your choice of a 1920 by 1080, uh, 144 hertz or 300 hertz matte finish IPS display, or a 380, 380 by 2160 Ultra HD 60 hertz glossy OLED screen. I hope but it's anti-reflective. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have against reflections, man? I know this has been a long-standing issue. 
<laughs> no, I had a bit of a mini rant in the um, in the show notes <laughs> because why would you want to have a glossy screen on a laptop that you will inevitably end up using somewhere with less than ideal lighting and you'll have glare on the screen? So you include that- it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. Yeah, hear me out. Hear me out. Um, my 43-inch monitor. It's not glossy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is glossy. It's not matte. That's what I meant to say. Senior moment. Yeah. The, You're not carrying that around. Says you. I, I mean, take, I take it for walk. whatever you need it. to, you know, <laughs> n- hit yourself over the head with to go to sleep. Pedro, but. It, we go to the park. I'm a responsible monitor owner. <laughs> I'll have you know. uh, do you pick up after it too <laughs> when it drops its little monitor poops <laughs> they're cute all right i don't even mind oh uh, is that the um little raspberry pi seven inch one <laughs> so mm-hmm. one thing i'll say about this now i have controlled lighting environment so it's not a big deal is cleaning it there's no special monitor wipes there's no you know Having a monitor sock, you know, buying a new such sock so you could have that microphone. And like, tss, tss, nah, this is coming here with some Windex, man. Tss, tss, tss. Nah. Um, it's just any microfiber cloth. Windex, Pedro. Yeah. Windex. <laughs> <laughs> you can use Windex. You can use. Um, you use Windex on a matte screen. Do it. It's just <laughs> once. I, I want to see the results. When that ammonia peels off the uh nah, I never use <laughs> ammonia. <laughs> isopropyl alcohol is what I use. Uh it's actually in here. That's isopropyl alcohol. Show <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's cool also is that the XP17 has the same HD options as the XP15, your choice of ultra HD 60 Hertz matte finished. Um IPS display, uh, but it also has that for the uh, 3840 by 2160, a map display. <laughs> so I don't you know why. You know what you should get for a laptop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the last time you were outside using your laptop, Pedro? Uh, <laughs> I got a point. When did the pandemic start? <laughs> Before the pandemic. <laughs> Uh, before the pandemic was actually a couple of weeks just before the pandemic. What were you doing? Instigating it? (laughs) No, I was actually, uh, with one of the network people in, at work, uh, while they were outside and I was looking at the Visio, uh, thing that has the topology and everything of the network. Okay. And some cat videos. (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> i've done show notes sitting outside on my laptop <laughs> a lot of people like laptops specifically for that is yeah. you carry it around and do whatever you want and sometimes lighting is less than ideal so matte screens glossy <laughs> although i do have to say that oled screens are beautiful and bright even outside so that Maybe that was one of their... That's kind of yeah. the selling point behind OLED, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they're wonderful. Like, if you look at look at it long enough, you get it stuck like that. You're like, oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I have a bunch of uh, weird glows all across the monitor. <laughs> so let's go from laptops to overpowered Atari towers. Oh, <laughs> this is beautiful. This is the, the System 76 line of powerful Thelio workstation desktop just had a dual GPU baby called the Thelio Mira. It's it has a fourth gen AMD Ryzen CPU. Y'all not even Sing- tried. <laughs> Single or double <laughs> GPU or dual GPU. Line it up properly. Yeah, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> and up to 128 gigs of RAM and up to four terabyte PCI, 4.0 NVMe. The and, dark doesn't uh, even go off. Come on. It's a little off. Yeah. A little off. A little. There's a border around it. <laughs> you get a one on this system, seventy six. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, what's also cool is the Thelio Mira sits in size and price between the classic the- smaller Thelio and the Thelio Major, and um, it starts at one thousand four hundred forty nine dollars. And you know, it is a high end workstation. With a dual GPU capable. So 
pretty so impressive. Jill, help me out. Um, what exactly <laughs> are the uh, technical specs for boss level graphics? Boss level graphics? Well, you can get. <laughs> <laughs> what does boss level graphics mean to you? <laughs> Well, I guess uh, uh, two NVIDIA GPUs is is uh, pretty nice <laughs> for doing AI work and uh, rendering animation. That would be really cool. <laughs> Adrian, so, uh, what what some... are your thoughts on boss level graphics? Uh, I think the they were uh, using marketing spiel to equate the uh, capabilities of the GPU with gaming. Come on, are you, which, are you trying to say they're appealing yeah. to the youths? Yes, uh, okay. in a way, but uh, no youths can afford that because <laughs> <laughs> well, I you went can get... to... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. You can get RTX 3070 or 3090, but you can also get R the Quadro RTX uh, cards mm -hmm. for professional use. So you have your choice. So yeah, you need to be the <laughs> boss of a corporation in order to be able to afford one of these. Uh, the <laughs> uh, I actually spec'd out yeah. <laughs> a variant uh, that I would consider as a replacement or upgrade for my current uh, PC. And first thing I noticed, why is the RAM speed capped at 3200? I get it for mm. the ECC RAM. That's they don't really have particularly fast uh, registered ECC RAM at this point. Mm -hmm. I get it. I do. But the how about the unregistered one? Uh, uh, Pedro, the, let me tell you about this little thing called warranties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but tell me you wouldn't do the same offering... thing if you were like, you know what? Let's not push this to the absolute snot max. Well, that's the thing. Both Ryzen 3000 and the 5000s that they are including with this option uh, support one-to-one -one scaling with the Infinity Fabric uh, speeds up to 3600 uh, megatransfers per second. Or if we're talking actual RAM speed, it's 1800 megahertz. So I'm both... Get... Oh, man, it's an extra 60... Oh, as you were, I'm oh, building yeah. a piece of 60 bucks for the one <laughs> yeah. that's not... Okay. For the dark one, yeah. I'm it sorry, is, I'm counting um... this. We're going to build a real one live. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, that counts. That's a necessity. <laughs> Because we're now having an Atari case. Um, and then I kept scrolling. It's like, all right, pick your GPU. So I picked the 3070 because that would be the only one of the options that they offer that would be an upgrade for me versus the 1080. $1,200 for a 3070. Wait a minute. Oof. Where's the thread render option? <laughs> Uh, Again, there isn't this one. is you meant get the for 59, render houses. <laughs> <laughs> render houses. Big business. Uh, hmm. All right. Well, it it okay, barely yeah. even qualifies as a workstation at this point, well, but yes. Well, hi, yeah. I, I'm going to at least go with something <laughs> that I'm working with right now. At least a 12 It's quarter. a render farm. Yeah. <laughs> this is a and, desktop. Uh, People that render farms haven't been in... They're in racks now, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm well aware of that. I have some of them. <laughs> And yeah, by the end, my specification with the 5900X, uh, the GTX uh, 3070, 32 gigs of uh, 3200 dual channel, non-ECC memory, $3,406. It's not bad. That's that. No, that's bad. I don't need additional <laughs> that's very storage. Bad. That is no normal. That is also what you'd pay for a Dell that's equivalent in that range. The oh, Dell no, might be no, a little no, bit no, less. A little bit but... less. Uh, a little, a little bit, bit less, like a couple of thousand dollars less, yeah. No, not a couple of thousand. Not a. I I have a Dell Jill, here. Guess who this procurement? Guess who this yeah, procurement? Yeah, to the wrong for Dell there, Jill. at work. I have a system know, right here that Dell... was originally ten grand. It was that was my render XPS? workstation. Jill. <laughs> not a XPS battle. desktops, Dell G fives. I ordered them. I ordered the Dell laptops. Yeah. Trust me, I can get the same specification with 32 oh, gigs I, of RAM for $1,500. They're not That's made in almost USA. $2,000 less. They're not made in USA and in Denver, Colorado. <laughs> so now we can get back to see how much mine's going to be. <laughs> now that you kids are done with your slap fight. Uh, what do I want? Do I want a 30? Nope, nope, nope. I want at least a 30. Well, how much? 800 bucks. Hmm. No additional, nope. Power nope, supply. No second GPU. Well, no, I don't have a thread ripper, so let's go on 650. <laughs> uh, display, nope. You nope, don't nope, need nope. those. <laughs> yeah, I skipped all of those too. 
I don't, I'm not. I'm not in Canada. No. <laughs> Thirty eight hundred dollars, or as low yeah, as one. Yours is a bit more expensive too. <laughs> I was lowballing <laughs> on the, that. I mean, that's the system I would use. I have no yeah, illusion. I, I that's not a system out. that I would aspire to own. That's something that yeah, I, I could do what I do now with. I didn't even pick out SSDs for my config because I figured I'm just going to use the ones that I already have if I was going to get one of them and just replace this box with the Thelio, but not at that price. Mm. But now you're this paying is the for thing. the customer support. It's made here, that open source, uh, you know, BIOS. Um, it's specifically made for Linux. That's what you're paying for. <laughs> $1,200 for a 3070. What exactly kind of BIOS are they flashing onto that? It's Marco. <laughs> Here's the thing. System 76, they make solid systems. And again, you know, if you're an experienced user, and well, especially when you get older in age too, sometimes you just want something, you know it's going to work out of the box. And you know when you call tech support, you're not going to be dealing with somebody who's like, what's a Linux? This is what they do. They're going to be able to help you with exactly. that. And yes, you're paying for that support. <laughs> You're paying for the wood grain, an extra 60 bucks to get rid of it, or at least put some paint on it. But, <laughs> hey, it's there, and if that's your jam, I get it, because I'm definitely at the age of um, when I was sticking the studio together. I, man, if I just wanted to like make it rain, like pre-built options, but they are considerably and have always been more expensive than DYI, unless yes. you're going for like... Bargain basement deal, you know, home stuff. Yeah. <laughs> stuff that you wouldn't really want anyway. Yeah. So, the uh, kind of power supply that you don't even trust to flip the switch on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There is that. <laughs> One thing I like to do is mess with people. Like, <laughs> chaotic neutral. Just, just make them question their sanity. That, you know, the long game stuff. And I think I found just the thing. This, this is lead capture. This flashes keyboard LEDs with incoming <laughs> and outgoing network packets. That's right. Look at this. Oh, uh, those LED. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're just going to randomly start blinking. And when you plug in a different keyboard tray to get it to fix, it's still going to blink. <laughs> really easy to set up i mean you know this it's python 3 man so you already have half the stuff that you need to do it and do you know that python 3 has a web server yeah yeah <laughs> I might have it's learned. had it for a while oh i'm sure it has i've never had okay <laughs> up until this week i've never had a use of like what's the easiest quickest like port 80 i can get oh oh python really all right there's a pair so <laughs> i want this i it, i'm immune to it because i have no blinky keys i don't even have caps lock yeah i'm hardcore <laughs> cheap keyboard <laughs> i you're right i could buy a cheap keyboard and uh those Microsoft keyboards are not cheap. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah I know. Dollars. And and so why doesn't have at least a couple lights? <laughs> I guess that's how they get to claim uh, battery life. Three months battery life. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's wireless. <laughs> like no LEDs whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, though, uh, the moment I see the uh, caps lock LED start blinking, my mm -hmm. brain goes, "Oh God, Colonel Panic." So, no, it's neat, but no. Not for me. <laughs> this is not for you. This is something that you get on the USB drive. <laughs> for messing with people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's something fun. <laughs> you can create more bling bling on your keyboard. But this one is functional. And actually, there was a hack at one time that did a similar thing, but it, it made the... Uh, Instead of your hard drive uh, blinking LEDs on the case, you could you could put that on and um, have that effect on your keyboard. So this is similar to that. <laughs> See, okay, now here's a different question. How come we don't have like RGB? Well, maybe they do. Maybe they do. RGB LEDs for your uh, cap lock uh, num lock indicators. You can you change color on those? Or are they still uh, just green because green? The the like turbo expensive uh yeah. each individual key has its own addressable led in it mm -hmm. yeah you can <laughs> yeah some of them do 
it's yeah the the cheaper ones uh they usually have zones so you can't individually address each led but yeah no the the more expensive ones but what can... i'm asking is can you change the color of the indicator oh, light yeah. on the board dumb lock scroll lock okay. caps lock uh the pause break uh when you there's uh i can't remember if it's the razor one or the uh logitech one that if you hold down shift it'll actually change the led bias on uh like keys that have a, another layer mm -hmm. like the number uh row above the uh the letters it'll change the led bias to the top of the key to say that's what you're typing very good. <laughs> I just don't understand why people have lights in their keyboard. It always confuses me. But hey, <laughs> use this to say hello to your friends and neighbors and family. Put it on a laptop. That'll, that'll really get people questioning. Like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> that that will drain that laptop battery real oh, quick. Oh, boy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, the and LEDs. And it might mess on, with the lights a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, LED, especially backlit keyboards on laptops, that's where the battery life goes usually. <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, we got one little slice of pie before we get out of here, but we first, mm -hmm. but we first, English, uh, want to thank all the people who make the show possible. They are our patrons. They are the awesome, beautiful, beautiful people over at patreon.com forward slash the team cast financing our wonderful shenanigans and we try to try to hook you up we got a weird business model we just do this stuff we give it away and you're like hey this is entertainment for you you enjoy it maybe kick us a buck a week that'd be brilliant 16 quarters a month we're gonna put that directly back into the show because uh we got hardware to buy and things to host but we try to sweeten the deal a little bit pedro you know we we got this sweet little discord then we hang we out do. in six days a week. <laughs> and isn't it, isn't it, do you, do you ever get this thought? Cool, chill people. Weird conversations sometimes, but always entertaining. That Oh yeah, I, I love it when <laughs> the weird conversations start happening. That's when I start paying attention you to this. Like, you're like, you're <laughs> watching, man. The thing that always is like shocked me is, you know, we have at any time between, you know, 70 to 80 people and they're just like chilling out doing their things. And, um, our Discord is more active than like just random like OAS Discord with thousands of people in it. Like, no, you wake up in the morning, you gotta <laughs> not scroll up because that's a rule. We don't scroll <laughs> it, up. It's the rule. Can't scroll yeah. up. That, that that's the only rule for joining our Discord. You can't <laughs> scroll up. That's it. <laughs> but we use it like Slack. If you're unfamiliar with Discord, it's effectively Slack, but it'll tell you what game you're playing if you want it to. And we use it for live audio streams. So and pre pre super shows. And if you want to. Hop in. That's another thing. We're like, hey, man, yeah, come on, help us out. And uh, try to sweeten that up. We got wish lists, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and get your name back here on this wall if you pick up something from the studio. A bunch of boring stuff in there, like fans. So I could just like point a fan at Pedro and blow it on the monitor. Routers and microphones uh, <laughs> for Pedro. Pedro's got, you don't have anything terribly good. Jordan likes to put like panda mask and stuff. I it. have, let's see, two microphones, some uh, XLR cables, like the colorful ones, and then some SSDs, a couple of processors, some uh, third-party Chinesium game controllers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think there's a, a Nokia 7.2 there that I will buy at some point. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I got lots of penguins and uh, plushy stuff. Yeah, plushy yep. stuff. But I but I have some <laughs> SSDs on there, and I had some other items, but I've just bought those for my computer upgrades. <laughs> well, thanks each and every one of you again for letting us do this, making the show possible. That's how we pay the bills. It is brilliant. Keep being awesome. So, mm -hmm. what do we have? We have one little slice of pie, and mm, pie. there it is. That looks like something I would have like rendered when i was seven uh, but hey it's there chili what's pie. the bottom <laughs> texture though <laughs> that's what yeah, i couldn't that figure was out weird. the bottom <laughs> texture <laughs> yeah the one that they're using for the shadow oh that's probably like internal organs or something that like, uh, yeah, yeah probably. Close enough. <laughs> okay so uh this one is uh interesting it's a different use for the um, that's dark why would you put your dog in the freezer <laughs> I don't think she's putting the dog in the freezer. Um, raspberry Pi <laughs> freezer monitor. Yeah, there's I a see picture. a dog. I, I think the dog Somebody is supposed to be dog? the allegory for the monitor. 
I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that or <laughs> she really likes a dog. I don't know. That you can take it up with the uh, um, video and um, article author Ashley Whitaker. Uh, she is the one who decided. You know, unlike everyone else who's been using the temperature sensors uh, for the Raspberry Pi and wiring them to the GPIOs just to set up their own weather station. No, no, no. She uh, decided, you know what? I'm going to put this in the freezer so that if things start to thaw, I know. And I'll get a notification and I'll be able to see. It's like, oh, this is, this is increasing. Okay. So... Yeah, that's uh, this all came about uh, because of the uh, power cuts in the U.S. not too long ago, especially in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there mm-hmm. was a lot of spoiled food and a lot of um, freezers that had plenty of time to heat up in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see this really useful to monitor the temperature of a fridge. When, say, the power goes out for an extended time or even a, sh- a short time, or if, if you have a, actually an old fridge that isn't accurate anymore. Some of, this, uh, some yep. of us have those. <laughs> and uh, very important right now to monitor COVID-19 vaccine freezers. This could be very <laughs> useful in the medical industry, for sure. And considering the state of some hospitals, they probably could use a little bit of help, but I help. wouldn't trust the <laughs> Raspberry Pi in that particular setting. <laughs> it, it, this is definitely 100% a neat project. I'm just immediately having flashbacks the last time I, well, I thought about buying an internet-connected refrigeration unit. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I just, I don't know if I need tweets from the icebox. <laughs> this, uh, this is just to monitor the temperature. The, it doesn't do the smart fridge thing of, uh, oh, I see you've uh, bought new things. Let me scan to see what it is that you Listen, bought. Listen, man, I'm old. Back in my day, we didn't need fancy electronics <laughs> to tell me the freezing point of dog. <laughs> yeah no this is definitely Aww. a very good way uh, to keep the neighbors from figuring out where you're hiding the bu- uh, i mean the um the ice cream the ice cream yes i don't know maybe you could put some security al- ice cream security alarms on there with some ice cream sentry mm-hmm. guns that shoots <laughs> that uh, double salted caramel ice cream it, it it needs to be kept a secret yes all right, kids, we're running <laughs> long. we got to bounce out of here. Uh, if you want to get a hold to us, Pedro Mateus, tell them how they can do it. LinuxGameCast.com. There's a contact button and a contact form. Just make sure you pick LWDW, and we will feature your message right here. Unless we uh, put that question on Google, and uh, it comes out with the reply on the first page. Oh, come that, on. That My new favorite thing basically is... Basically, excuse you. Favorite thing, <laughs> 100%, is the comment diversion thing on youtube i've ran into that this week twice I'm like hey what's this i'm like oh oh and you answer the question you're like unrelated but here's another mm-hmm. one no 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 we're not doing that but hey if <laughs> no, you're working on some neat, yeah <laughs> neat projects yeah. <laughs> something you got going on question you have um uh, anything like that you just want to tell pedro that yes um usb's sometimes fail on amd you should be grateful to <laughs> yeah, amd for do. giving you the opportunity <laughs> to experience that was a learning experience yeah. for me <laughs> so uh we gotta bounce out of here but we will see you next week but until then maybe i get some credits i got a bunch of things i gotta click a bunch buttons right now that's not the right ones either <laughs> there it is ah we did it Oh, I hear it. It's the credits. Yay. <gasps> then Stone, Pedro Mateus, <laughs> and me. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while. And your name is? <laughs> Jill. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> don't drink Thank glitter. You. <laughs> or do. We don't really judge. Yeah, no, that's I like mean, we do. But if you do, but film we do it, it silently. Yes. <laughs> But yes, all this, this very show was brought to you by you because... By you? Give yourself a pat on the back. Yes. You caused this. (laughs) You only have yourselves (laughs) to blame. I'm sorry. (laughs) Thanks, Brett. (laughs) Hey.